Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? And welcome to another edition of the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. And um, I got a question for you, Who That Nation. Does the NFL have a mercy rule? That's right. The New Orleans Saints beat the sheesh out of the Cincinnati Bengals by a score of 51 to 14. And in my opinion, this game wasn't even that close. You can say it was 51 to 7 because the Cincinnati Bengals scored a touchdown in garbage time. This game right here, it improves the Saints record to 8 and 1. And right now the Saints are rolling. They have won eight straight games. The only game they lost was in week one against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And you have to say right now that the New Orleans Saints are the best team in all of football. Drew Brees was efficient as usual. He went 22 of 25 for 265 yards, three touchdowns, and he even ran a touchdown. And you had Mark Ingram returning back to Mark Ingram form. He had 13 carries for 104 yards. And Alvin Kamara doing this thing. 12 carries, 56 yards, and two touchdowns. Michael Thomas, as usual, handled up on his business. Shouts out to Michael Thomas, man, because that first touchdown to put the Saints up 7 or nothing. I mean, that cornerback had perfect coverage on Michael Thomas, and Michael Thomas still made the catch. Man, he is really living by his Twitter hand. Can't guard Mike because nobody can guard this dude right now, man. This dude is on fire. You have to say that Michael Thomas is the best wide receiver in all of football right now. He is playing at an elite level, and he's playing like he wants the Saints to back up a Brinks truck in front of his home. But the New Orleans Saints, a question that everybody's been asking, do they have the best offense in football? And this is so easy to it's ridiculous. It's actually insulting that the media will even say this about this team. The Saints have the best offense in football. I'm going to tell you what. Drew Brees only throws to about three guys, okay, on a regular. He only throws to Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, and Benjamin Watson. And you can maybe sprinkle a little Mark Ingram in there every now and then, but for the most part, he only throws to three guys. And people still can't stop it. If you only throw to three guys and teams still can't stop it, you have to say that their offensive is elite. Because you look at Kansas City. Kansas City is a good team. They do have a good offense. There ain't no doubt in my mind about that. But at the end of the day, you have to give respect to the Saints. Kansas City Chiefs, they got about five, six different options that Patrick Mahomes can throw to. And enough of this talk about Patrick Mahomes is just running away with the MVP. Drew Brees is playing at an elite level right now. I am going to continue to say that. I am going to continue to sound like a broken record. I'm going to continue to sing the praises of Drew Brees. I don't care if Patrick Mahomes is throwing the football all over the place and has like 30-plus touchdowns. He has seven interceptions. Drew Brees is leading the NFL in completion percentage. He is leading the NFL in passer rating. He has only one interception this entire season. You cannot look past that. Now, I understand Patrick Mahomes is the new toy. He's the Buzz Lightyear of the NFL, and maybe Drew Brees is the Woody. But at the end of the day, Woody is still a quality toy, and Drew Brees is still a quality quarterback. And I feel like the NFL media, they need to cut this stuff out, all right? Y'all need to cut it out. Patrick Mahomes is a good quarterback. I'm not going to take it away from him. But at the end of the day, it shouldn't just be about stats. It should be most valuable, okay? That is what the war says, most valuable player. Last year, Alex Smith was the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, and they still went to the playoffs. They still had an efficient offense. It wasn't like Patrick Mahomes just came in and just took the world by storm and turned the world upside down in Kansas City. Alex Smith, as much as people try to give him criticism about being a game manager, he still led those guys to the playoffs. So Patrick Mahomes isn't doing something that's just so special. And if you put any quality quarterback, it don't have to be an elite quarterback, a decent quarterback on the Kansas City Chiefs, they'll be doing the same thing Patrick Mahomes is doing. I don't see anything special. 
you take Drew Brees away from the New Orleans Saints at the helm, the New Orleans Saints are not the same team. You can say whatever you want. Look, I like me some Teddy Bridgewater. I feel like he's the future of the Saints, but he is not going to do what Drew Brees does. If you are a New Orleans Saints fan, and I'm talking about a New Orleans Saints fan that that was before 2000, that watched the Saints. I'm talking about the Jim, watching the Jim Everett and the Billy Joe Hobers and the Billy Joe Tolliver's watching agony on TV, watching these guys just stink it up all over the place. You have an appreciation for Drew Brees and you realize that a quarterback like Drew Brees doesn't come around very, very often. But I just had to say that. But back to the game, I think that this was a solid win for the Saints. I was a little bit nervous. I thought that the Saints were going to go out here and fall into the trap of the Cincinnati Bengals. Everybody was singing the Saints praises, calling them the number one team in the league, calling them the best team in all of football. And I thought maybe they would be reading their press clippings. But this game right here showed me a lot about this team. This game showed me that this team wants it all. They want to go all the way, that this is Super Bowl or bust for this team. Because I can remember a couple of years ago, a game like this would have happened, and the Saints would have been reading the press clippings, and they would have went out there and snuck it up and laid an egg. But the Saints did what good teams do. They go out, they handle their business, and they go home. It's very, very simple. And I'm very, very proud of the team. And, um... I got to talk about Keith Kirkwood, um, the guy who came out the practice squad, who played in the game. He did a solid job, man. He had 45 yards receiving. And it, you have to be optimistic as a Saints fan to know that the Saints have talent like this on the practice squad. I am fully convinced that the Saints don't need to go out here and try to pick somebody up off the street. Now, I heard from NFL sources that the Saints are bringing in Brandon Marshall and they're going to try to sign him, which I don't think that's a bad thing, but... Do we really need Brandon Marshall after what you've seen out of Keith Kirkwood? They were talking about this guy since training camp, but they put him on the practice squad because they felt like he needed a little bit more polishing and he paid dividends on yesterday with some uh, some good catches. Um, I think that this young man has good upside. Um, he's 6'3". I think he's maybe like 215 to 220, something like that. I mean, you can really tell like he has a good football body. And you can tell he's hungry. He was excited, and he, he had a little swagger with him, man. I seen him, like, re, you know, do the little first down pose when he caught a pass, and he caught another pass on the sidelines. I like that. I like that right there, man. And I like the fact that the Saints threw up the X for Des Bryant. Now, I've seen a lot of criticism from Saints fans talking about he was only with the team for two days. Look, man, that goes to show you the camaraderie that this Saints team have, okay? If you're a Saints player, rather you're hurt or not, they're still going to give you your respect. That is what you call a quality locker room. Every time you see the Saints, you know, they're celebrating together. You never see one guy celebrating by himself. You always see another guy or a group going out there celebrating with them. That's what it's all about, man. Playing for the other guy. Not playing for yourself. Not looking at your stats. Not, you know, worrying about how you affected somebody's fantasy team. But going out and playing for one another. That is what good teams do. That is what Super Bowl winning teams do. And I'm very proud of this New Orleans Saints team. Coming up, they got the world champion Philadelphia Eagles, who just came off a loss against the Dallas Cowboys. So you know that game right there is going to be a tough one. They're going to be playing in the Superdome. I'll give you my prediction later on in the week about that game. But this has been the State of the Saints podcast. Please follow the State of the Saints podcast on Facebook and also go to YouTube, go to youtube.com, search the State of the Saints podcast, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications. And also, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you that listens and views the State of the Saints podcast because of each and every one of you. The State of the Saints podcast is now available on iHeartRadio. So, Go ahead and download the iHeartRadio app and search the State of the Saints podcast and you'll be able to listen to all of the episodes. So thank you all very much. Till next time, all I have to say is, who that?